All right, well, welcome to a Python class. We're going today to talk about Python variables. Um, obviously, variables are incredibly important to uh, programming languages. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things. First off, in order to, to work through this, you're going to need to have a text editor open. Um, I use Sublime. Uh, and you'll have to have a command prompt open to run it. Now, what I, what, I, what I think you should do is make sure that your command prompt is open and in a directory uh, where you can save your Python files um, so that you can execute them quickly and easily with the Python command. Um, so first off, there are in Python, um, in fact, I'll just go ahead and um, open a notepad here real quick. Um, in Python, there, there's a couple of concepts that you have to know. So let's just talk about that briefly. Um, first off, um, in, in, in Python, you're going to learn to cr create what we call statements. And, and this is the same in any language. Um, uh, every, all code is just a, a, a series of statements that you'll be making. And, and, and that ultimately is what makes a program. Um, every statements usually take advantage of the use of variables. Now, what is a variable? So um, a variable is, is basically, um, it's a place that stores values. So a variable stores a value. And typically the value um, is different um, with each instance of a program that you run. So when you run a program, you'll have a different instance uh, of that variable. And that variable may have different values. Um, sometimes the values will be the same. Um, and va va variables also have uh, a type. Um, so a type of data that's stored in them. Um, for example, a variable could be a string, some characters, or it could be a number, or it could be a special type of number, which we'll talk about later. Um, a variable could also be a list of stuff, right? It may not be just one type of thing. It could be many, um, a, a dictionary of stuff or a list of things or um, um, ideas like that. Uh, basically, a variable assigns the, the data to a place in memory. So it, it, it's always assigned a location in memory, which means that once the variable has been assigned, then you can recall that variable and use it again. Um, and this is very important. Um, there's also a couple other things you have to understand. Operators is another term we'll be introduced to uh, in here. And there are a lot of operators. You've already used them um, so far in class. The big one is the assignment operator. Assignment operator. And the assignment operator is basically the equal sign. So that is the assignment operator. And we're going to talk about the assignment operator today a lot. Um, so get ready for that. Um, Finally, the other thing you have to deal with is called a function. And a function is basically a, a reasonable chunk of code or a statement um, that, that, that you use to issue um, a command. Um, the most common one, which you're already used to, um, was the print function. Um, and, and, and you learned last time, or hopefully you learned last time, that you know Python 3 is now issuing print is actually a function statement that requires the parentheses. Um, and so you, you, last, last week we learned that we had to put parentheses around our print commands. Um, and, and, and by the way, sometimes you'll see functions called methods. And really, a function is a method when it's been put into a what we call a class. Um, and so that's another word that you'll hear. A class or an object that is based on a class will have a method in it. And really, there's no difference between a function and a method. Um, Python is a unique language in that Python doesn't require necessarily that you have classes for everything. Um, there are some programming languages which every time you create something, you have to create a class for it, and you have to um, put methods in that class to perform something. But in Python, it allows you to kind of go either way. So you can have a class, and you can have methods in the class, or you can just run standalone functions. Um, either way works, um, and there's different reasons for it. 
a, a purist would create everything in an object and, and run it, but sometimes it's just not that simple, right? Sometimes in Python, you just need to do something quick and easy, and trying to deal with a class structure would be complicated. Um, if you don't understand that, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get into classes and objects uh, a little bit later. Um, but these are some of the basic words that you're going to have to learn um, that we'll be covering today. Um, these are some basic key words that we'll be using in this in this particular lecture. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to um, minimize that. I have a uh, text editor and I have my command prompt open. And first off, I'm just going to um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put in a basic statement. Um, and, and this will be easy. We'll just do the, the hello command. So I'm going to do print, and then in parentheses, I will put um, my single quote. You can do double quote as well, but I'm going to use single quote. Print, and I'm going to say hello, everyone. I won't say hello, world, because uh, everybody does that. So I'll say hello, everyone, and I'm going to print this, right? So I now have a command. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm going to save this to my Python scripts directory. And I'm going to give it a name. We'll just call it um, variable, var um, uh, variable test.py is what I'll call it. So I, now I have this file called variable test.py. And now that I've saved that, I'm going to go over here to my command prompt. And I've changed directories to the exact directory um, where I have this file. And I can now run Python. Um, which is the executable for Python, and I'm going to run the variable um, test.py. And there it goes. It says, hello, everyone, back. So I've now got, you know, my, my basic command running, and I've been able to show you and demonstrate how you run Python to execute that command. So I basically executed a standalone function um, with, and this is very important, this is a string literal. So the, the command inside the print statement was a string literal. Now, I don't have to always print string literals. I can also print variables. So that's the next step you need to understand is, is this was a string literal. And it, I called it a, a string literal because it was in quotes. Now, if I go up here and instead of typing in quotes, I just get rid of this and I do print x. And x is my variable. Now, if I were to run this now, I'll get an error. In fact, you should experiment every time. You should always practice and just see what happens, right? That's this this part of being in Python. You just try things and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and try this now. And, and this is not going to be happy. This is it's not going to like this. So in fact, you'll see, and, and you should look at exactly what the error is. It says, um, you know, in line one. Uh, print x, it says name error. Name x is not defined. So the name x was not defined. Now if I go in here and I put quotes around x, if I put a quote around x and now I save this, now I'll have a different result over here. So you watch what happens. Um, now I run variable test.py and now I it actually prints x. Um, do you see that? So I ran it, and it printed the literal string x, because now it's a literal string. And by the way, just, just so you know, and just to prove it to yourself, you can do this in double quotes and save that, and, and you should get the same result. See, if I go here, I get x, right? And by the way, this is actually really a literal string. So try, try it as a capital and, and see what happens. I'm going to do this a capital x and see what happens. See, it's, this is a literal string. And I'm going to get exactly In fact, I'll do XXX or triple X. And um, uh, we're, this is an X rated Python class. And so I'm going to do boom. And look, I get my three X's. See, because this is a literal string. But now, once again, once I take away those quotes and I just want to print X in all uppercase um, and I save that, um, oh, I, I have to register my. Uh, my sublime here, I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to go pi in here, and boom, notice x is not defined. So there we go. So I'm going to clear my screen here. And so I have an error now. So I obviously, in order to fix this error, I have to actually define x. So I'm going to go back to the lowercase letter x here, and I'm going to now define x. So up here, I can now say x, 
And now here is where we are going to use the assignment operator. So the assignment operator is the equal sign. So I'm going to say x is equal to, and I'm going to assign x to some value. So I'm going to assign it to a string literal. And this time I'll say hello, um, everyone. Hello, Python class. So here um, my my I have a string literal called hello Python class, um, and I've assigned that to x, um, as you can see. So you always read it like this. Whenever you see an equal sign, the thing on the right is assigned to the thing on the left, by the way. So always remember that. The thing on the right is assigned to the thing on the left. So now that I'm done with that, I'm going to say this, and let's see what happens now that I'm going to print x with x assigned. And so I'm going to run Python in my file, and voila, there you go. See, it says... Hello, Python class, because basically instead of printing x, I printed the variable x, and now I've defined x as hello, Python class, and now it prints correctly, right? So you've basically taken a variable, <coughs> you've assigned it a value with the assignment operator, and then you've printed that, right? Simple enough. Wasn't that difficult? Um, working with variables is, well, relatively is relatively easy. Um, it, it's a simple thing. Now, it gets complicated. There's there's issues that come up, right? Um, and, and we got to deal with those issues because, you know, it gets more and more interesting as you go. Um, and and you got to realize that, that things happen in a certain order. You know, there's certain things that can go wrong with this sort of thing. So, um, you know, we, we got to dive in and, and kind of practice and learn about what the different areas that could be problematic. So let's go through a few. Um, so let's talk about um, uh, let's talk about concatenating strings together and things like that. So um, uh, uh, I've got I've got um, well let, let's just first off let's deal with this thing. So I'm going to get rid of all this and I'm going to say you know uh, um, x is equal to the string literal guy. Um, and I'm going to say y is equal to the string literal um, reams. And now that's that's x, y, right? So x is equal to the string literal guy. And reams is equal to, uh, y is equal to string literal reams. Pretty simple. So now I could print. And now in my thing, I can actually concatenate. And, and when I add strings together, I, you always, we always use do the fancy word concatenate. And so I could now um, do x plus y. So I'm, I'm basically saying I'm going to concatenate x and y together, and I'm going to print that. So let's see what happens when I do this. Um, I'm going to save that, and we'll go um, boom. And now notice it puts um, guy reams together, right? Um, and, and I may not like the way that does that. And one of the really cool things about... Um, Python is, you could literally in Python um, deal with text in like a million different ways. So we're going to learn all throughout this class how to deal with text. Um, and in fact, you'll, you'll note that in the last exercise I gave you, which some of you may not figured out yet, um, there are some interesting things going on with dealing with text specifically with inputs, and we'll talk a little bit about that later today. But um, we got print x, y. Now, notice it didn't put a space. So one way to handle this would have been said z equals, um, and string little guy, um, space rings, right? So now I could have gone print um, z, right? I could, I could do that. And now let me save that. And let's go ahead and see what happens now. Now notice uh, the, the, the Z, which is equal to the literal guy space rings, um, you know, doesn't work. Now, one thing you'll want to note is if I would have done print Z up here, right, instead of down there, let's see what happens when I do that. I'm going to save this, and now let's try it up here. Notice that I get name Z is not defined because notice that the operation order here is out of whack. And I haven't declared Z yet. Um, and then I do I declare Z here, 
I, I assign the variable z to a value here, and then I print it. So notice this print statement doesn't work, whereas this one does. So, you know, it's very common to, you know, move your, to always declare your um, variables early on in the game. Uh, that's very common so that you don't run into that sort of issue. So if I go back up here, now this will work fine because I've declared the variable earlier on, right? Now, um, what's interesting, now, now before we do that, we, how do we handle the space issue, right? Well, one easy way to do it would be to simply just put a space in the literal string, right? File, save, and now we'll see what happens with that, right? If I run, now notice that both of them look identical because I put a space here, right? Um, that's one way to deal with it. Another simple way to deal with it, by the way, would then to uh, just create another variable. So, for example, I could say uh, instead of z equals guy range, I'll make z equal to a space character, right? I could do that. And then I could do x plus y plus z, right? Um, I could do that. So let's, um, well, that won't work. I would have to do x, because if I do x plus y plus z, it'll be guy plus rings plus blank. So maybe I want it to be guy plus blank plus rings, or that variable, right? Um, so let, let's, let's, let's try that. Let me get rid of this print z statement here. Let's see what happens there. I'll save that. And now let's run our command. And there we go. We got guy. And there's a space there, right? Um, in fact, it looks like it might be more than one space. So this is where you have to start experimenting, right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now I just have uh, two quotations. I'm going to save that. And let's see what that does. So I'm going to run that. Boom. And there you go. Now I got my space. So uh, basically, when you put two quotes together, that gives you <clears throat> a space. And by the way, there was another way to do this. There's lots of ways to do this. I, I could have manipulated the output from X and Y and had it add stuff in there, but not going to worry about that. Um, not right now. We'll, we'll get to that later. But there you go. Um, so now I've concatenated text together. And by the way, you could actually multiply text together. Um, you get weird results with that. Um, so I could print um, the number... Four um, multiplied by x, right? I mean, you could do something like this. Let's see what happens, just for fun. Well, what happens when I multiply text together? Right? Um, and and then I get guy, 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 guy. I get guy four times, right? So it took the string guy four times and repeated it, which is interesting. Now you can only really multiply and add strings together. You can't really divide or subtract strings. I don't think Python really knows what to do with that. Um, but, but you know, it doesn't really know what to do that, but you can, uh, multiply and add strings together. Now it's even more important to realize that you don't have to assign just string literals to, to variables. You can assign numbers. So let's, let's go ahead and blank out some of this stuff. And, um, let's say X is equal to, you know, five and Y is equal to, to 10. Um, and Z is equal to, well, we won't do a Z right now. Um, let's just kill Z. And then, um, and then we'll see what happens when I print X plus Y, right? Um, we'll, we'll see what happens when I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, save that. And now notice X is equal to 5 and Y is equal to 10. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And notice it's 15, right? Because 10 plus 5 is 15. So... Um, in this case, I'm not declaring them to string variables. I'm actually declaring them to be integers. Um, and this brings up an important point, which we'll elaborate here as we go. The important point is that Python is a soft typing language, which means that it, it, it assigns a type, a variable type to these numbers um, or to these strings. Um, and, and, and we can convert between types a lot, and I'll show you a little bit how to do that. But when I set x equals 5, I made that an integer, which means it stores a number value, and I can perform number calculations on that value. For example, I could have done, I could have done 5, I can do, oh, oops, x um, multiplied by y, right? And so we should get a totally different value there, because these are integers. These are not string literals anymore. I'm not going to get x 5 times. I'm going to get 5 times 10. 
So let's take a look and see if that's the result. And I do. I get the, the, the value 50. Now, if I would have done y, um, y divided by x, right, that's a division problem. And if I say that, let's see what happens. And I get 2, right? So, um, uh, And notice that I get 2.0, which means the value that was created out of that is kind of a floating point value, which which we'll talk about more in a minute. But um, you get the idea. Oh, and then you can subtract. So x, I could do um, y, um, y minus x, right? Um, so let's save that. And let's see what that does. And I get 5, right? Because I'm subtracting, right? So there you go. That's how you handle variables with different values. Now, one thing also that I, I think you should make note of is that you can assign variables to different things. Like, for example, I want to do x equals guy, um, y equals reams, um, and then maybe I want to make uh, x, or actually, um, let's just do, let's do x equals a well, better idea. We'll do guy space reams, x equals guy reams, right? Got that. Um, and now, and now, what we'll do is we'll do, um, and I'm going to get rid of this print statement so it's not confusing. Um, I can do x equals um, y. Now, what I'm saying is that wh what I'm actually saying here is y is equal to x, um, right? So that now I can do print x. If I do print x, we'll see what it happens. And if I do print y, we'll see what happens, right? I just want you to see what will happen. So I'm going to save this. And let's talk about what happens after I save it. Um, I get an error, right? And let's talk about what's happening here, right? Let, let's 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 deal with this issue. Um, y was not declared, or it's not defined. You see that? So x is equal to y. So the value y has not been assigned. It needs to be assigned to x, but there is no value for y. Now, if I were to change this right here, where I said y is equal to guy reams, <clears throat> and then I were to say x equal to y, the value of y is going to be assigned to x. Now, let's see what happens there. So I'm going to save that, and let's see what happens. Now I get the result I'm expecting, right? So pay attention to how this looks right here. Remember the assignment, how the assignment operator works. I'm taking the value of y and giving it to x. So in this case, the value of y is guy reams, and I'm assigning that to x. Now this works, you can do this even further. So I could say z is equal to y is equal to x. And um, now th this won't work right now. Like if I were to go print z, watch. Um, this will not work because z does not have a value. But just to make sure you understand, if I run this, what error do you think I'm going to get, right? Um, I'll get, you know, z is not defined. But if I go up here and I were to define z, so I say z is equal to um, guy m reams, right? Um, actually, I, can't, I need to put a quote around it. Guy m reams, which ends with my middle name. I'll save this. And now let's see what happens. Um, and then let's talk about it. So I'll run this. <clears throat> and there we go. Notice what happened. The value for z got assigned to y, and the value for y got assigned to x. You see what happened there? And, 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 and notice that the, y for, the value for y that was originally set to just guy reams got overridden by the value from z. So that's just an important understanding there. Um, you got to kind of understand how the order of operations works with variable assignments um, with these things. All right. Now, uh, where else do we want to go with this? Okay, um, another thing to kind of think about is um, just generally dealing with the conversion of different numbers from different values. I mean, this can get a bit, you know, dicey um, or a bit complicated. Um, so, um, for example, let me think of one. Let me think. Let me think of a good one. Um, Uh, 
Well, I was trying to think of a good uh, good number. Yeah, oh, just simple ones. Let me let me do, let me let me clear this out, and and I'll and I'll deal with a with a simple um, concept. So, if I were to set a number x is equal to a number like five, or let's pick a, a nine, x is equal to nine, and then I were to print, um, and I can there's a command you can you uh, print. And I'm going to put in parentheses. Uh, there's a command that I can run called the type command. And I'm going to use type, and if you notice, Sublime can see it. So the type command, and then I want to know the type of A. What, what type is A, right? Um, so I can, um, I can uh, print, oh, let me just print X first. And then we'll print the type of, not A, what am I talking about? X. So I'll print the type of X. So let's see what happens. I'm going to save that. And let's run that. Oh, I didn't put the parentheses around X. Sorry. So let me let me do that. Python, Python 2 uh, coming back at me. All right. So let me run um, that. And then, oh, that didn't work. Oh, did I save this? I don't think I saved it. All right. Um, so notice the, the, the results I got back. First off, I set x equals to 9. I printed x, so I see the value 9 that I printed. And then I wanted to know what type x was. And notice that x is of type integer. So I know that this is an integer. Now let's play around. Um, if I were to set 9 to 9.999999, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, right? This is called a floating point. And I'm going to save that. And then um, let's let's run the same command. See what we get. Now this is called. Notice I got nine 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 nine, and this is class float. Now another figured out that you can set, you know, you can set x to something like if I wanted to set it to a string like nine, right? And then I'm going to save that. Um, let's see what result you get there because notice here it's class string. So there's a variety of different types of types, and you'll notice that. Python figured out what type to set it as and automatically set it. Now, the reason you need to know that is because sometimes when you go to try to combine variables together or use variables in a certain fashion, the type matters. Um, and by the way, you can convert these strings as you need to. For example, um, let me do y is equal to... Um, inch, um, I don't know why this just came into my head, but it did, I, nine inch nails. Why did I think of that suddenly? That's crazy. Um, anyway, nine inch nails, right? And then I could do print X plus Y plus Z. Now this all makes sense, right? Um, um, th this will make sense and this should work, right? So let's, let's see what happens. I'm gonna print all three of those together. And of course, I'm I'm not going to get spaces here, so I may you know, we'll, but we'll we'll see what happens here. So I'll do this, and then I get my nine inch nail all concatenated together, right? This all works fine and dandy until one of these becomes a non uh, uh, an integer, and suddenly things start to change because now I'm combining variable types. Let's see what happens, if anything, and now I get an issue because now I'm trying to add an integer and a string together, right? Um, that doesn't work. So I'm trying to add the, the number nine with string. So that doesn't work. Now you may, so because of this, you have to figure out how to deal with that variable difference in order to get it to work with um, the other variable. So one, one way you could do that is convert it on the fly, right? So um, I now know that X is going to be, at this point in time, an, uh, uh, an, an integer value. So what I could do is print, um, I want to print X, but I can convert it maybe, right? Um, so maybe I can say, you know, I want this to be a string. Um, I want X to be a string. I want to convert X to a string, then add it to Y and Z. So let's see what happens there. So I'm going to save that, and let's see what happens. 
And there we go. Now I've got my nine inch nails, right? Because notice what happened here. I used this command right here to convert whatever was in, whatever it was in the, the command string. I'm converting that to a string. <coughs> Same thing else can happen. Um, if, for example, um, let me let me just do a, a real easy example here. I want one, and I'll make I'll make all these strings right. One plus two plus three, right? These are all now strings. Now, if I were to do um, x plus y plus z, you can kind of think, well, what's going to happen here? Well, let's see what happens. Since these are all strings, I'm going to run this run this right here, and I'm going to get one, two, three, um, right? But if I were to go and convert all of these using this new command you just learned, I'm going to convert all of these to integers, and then I'm going to add them together. So let's see what happens there. So in order to do that, I'm going to do this, and string bump, and there we go. Now, this is something you need to notice. And some of you had problems with this in the last exercise. Notice I have a parentheses here, right? And I have a parentheses. This parentheses is closed here. This parentheses is closed here. Notice that this parentheses is closed here. In order for this command to be finished, I have to add a parentheses at the end. You see that? So I've now got, um, I'm now converting X, Y, and Z all to strings and adding them together. So I'm going to go File, Save, and I'm going to clear my screen. And let's see what happens there. Uh-huh. What? So one, two, three. Um, it's not working. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's think about this real quick. Now I want I'm I'm gonna uh, I did save it. Hmm. Why is this not working? Well, that doesn't make any sense. I'm taking a string and I'm converting it to a string. It's already a string, right? Now it would make sense if these weren't strings. I take this out of here. And, and Python makes these numbers, right? So now we know that one, two, three going in are integers. And now I'm going to convert them to strings. Um, now we'll get the same result, right? Won't we? Because let's see what happens. Um, yeah, we get the same result because I've taken the numbers, converted them to strings, and added them together, right? Now if I were to take out the string and just add them together, that would be fine. Now how could I then... How would I then convert 1 and 2 and 3, the letter? How would I convert those to numbers? Well, that's simple. I can just use the integer command. So I'm going to take INT. I'm going to convert those each to integers and then add them together. Right? So there we go. And I'm going to save that. And let's see what happens now. Ah, now we get six, see? So I've taken these three um, strings, one, two, and three, converted them to integers, and then added them together, right? So that was relatively painless. Um, very good. Um, so we're, we're picking it up as we go. So that's good. So we're starting to learn a little bit. So now let's jump in, and I want to deal with um, a couple of other concepts. So you understand soft typing now. You understand adding variables. You understand how to add numbers together. You know how to assign variables. Um, you, you kind of figured all of that out. So one thing we'd like to do is take inputs from users in the command line. And um, I want to talk a little bit about how to, how to take inputs from the users. Um, and so let, let's deal with that. Um, first off, here's, it, this is the easy way to take inputs from users. You learned it last class. If you paid attention to the random number game, it kind of taught you how to do this. But I'm going to show you how it actually works and, and go through it slow. So I'm going to take my variable test here. I'm going to go, I'm going to say name. So um, my name, so my name is equal to, and now I'm going to say I want input from the user. So I'm going to use the command called input, and that's what this command is. It's called input. And you might have noticed that Python 2 used this command called raw input. Um, that's been changed to just the plain command input now. And now I'm going to say um, give um, uh, what is your name, right? And I'll put a space there. Um, so what is your name, right? And I'm going to end that in parentheses. Now, 
Then I'm going to say print, and I'm going to print. Um, I'll, I'll just say print. Uh, let's see. I'll just say print in parentheses my name. So what's going to happen here? Well, the input command is going to do something very interesting. So I'm going to save that, and I'll go over here, and we'll run it. And it's going to ask me for input, right? And I'm going to type Guy Reams. And now it prints me back Guy Reams. Okay. Well, I might make this more interesting. Like I might say print, and then in I, I might put in quotes, um, hello. And then I'm going to say hello, and then I'll say, um, put that in quotes, and then I'll add my name, and then I'm going to say, um, and then I'll go add, and then I'm going to add a string. Uh, hello, guy, uh, guy, your name. It is a pleasure to meet you. Right? So let's see if this works. So um, I'm going to save that, and I'm going to run that over here. And what's your name? Guy Reigns. And hello, Guy Reigns. It is a pleasure to meet you. Um, now, I messed up on the spacing. So um, I might want to add, you know, I could do this several ways. I could actually add a space here, or I could add, you know, my, my, my um, double quote thing right here. And then I can add that right here. So there's all sorts of ways to do this. You can do it however you want. Um, that's the cool thing about Python. And I'm going to save this. Let's see if I fix my space problem. Um, uh oh, what did I do wrong? Um, oh, I didn't get a quote. Notice this. I did not get a quote around there. See what? Ah, see, Sublime is making things yellow for me. I should pay attention more instead of, instead of going so fast. All right, so here we go again. And what is your name, Guy? Hello, Guy. It is a pleasure to meet you. Uh oh, my little space thing didn't work out. I wonder why. Oh, I, I, I kind of know why, but we'll we'll just experiment. Does the does the quotes matter? Let's see. If, let's see if the quotes matter. Um, let's see if I do mix quotes. What happens? I, I'm just doing this because I like. I want you to learn to experiment. Um, nope, that didn't work. Hello, guys. So the quote didn't matter. So that's not it. So I'm learning to experiment. Um, that didn't. So hello, um, hello, space guy plus. My name plus I wanted it to be a space. What if I added a space? What would that do? Let's try that. Guy and hello, guy. Oh, now I got my space, right? Oh, in fact, I could maybe, you know, um, hello, guy, comma. It is a pleasure to meet. Let's try that. See what happens there. Let's see what. All right, guy. Hello, guy. It is a pleasure to meet you. All right, so there you go. See, I'm just having fun experimenting. I challenge you to do the same. So there we go. So now I've got hello, my name is a pleasure to meet you. So I basically took input, and I put the input back, and I used that variable that I created from the input, and I printed it back to me, right, um, which is kind of fun. Um, so that's how you get input from the user, and that's how you bring it back, and that's how you concatenate strings together. Um, to do that. Now, one thing you have to deal with is, you know, maybe you want to say something like, um, let's go, let's go, um, age equals um, input. And I'm going to ask another question What is your age? Right? So, what is your age? So, tell me your age, Mr. Guy. Um, and then, and then after that, I can say, um, now here, I'm going to do it as an error here. Um, and, and, uh, and see, so, um, and in fact, let's just print age here and let's, let actually let's, let's print age and then we'll do our, um, what we can do our type code thing, um, here. If you remember, uh, we'll see what, what, what. What type does age come back in? So let's do that. Let's do print. If you remember, what was the command? It was type. Um, and then let's do the type for age, right? So let's just see what that comes back as because I'm interested in what is going to be the input thing, right? So um, if I go um, print variable test, um, 
What is your name? Oh, this is interesting. It's only asking me for one input. Hmm. Anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that. What is your name? Guy. And what is your... Hello, Guy. It's a pleasure to meet you. What is your age? Now, let's see what happens. If I put in... Uh, how old am I? Well, I? I'm old. I'm ancient. So we'll do four. I'll just put... I won't tell my age. Well, yeah, I won't tell my age. Who cares? I'm 44. So I'll do 44. Um, what is your age? 44. And the number age is equal to 44. And the class is string. Um, so that doesn't work. If I wanted to, for example, print print age plus 10, right? I want to do age plus 10. And, and I save that. Now, this is going to give me an error probably. So let's see what happens. Um, uh, what is your name? Guy. What is your age? 44. Um, ah, I can't have an integer, the number 10, added to a string, which is age. So in order to deal with this, I'm going to have to convert age to a string. So based on what I've taught you, what are you going to do to do that, right? How are you going to fix that? Hmm. Well, I think what I'll have to do um, is change age, right? So now you can say age is equal to an integer value of age, right? So I'm converting age, right? So um, let's see what happens now. So I'm going to get the input age. I'm going to set the age is going to be equal to a number. Um, and um, age is going to be equal to the integer of age. So I'm going to convert age into an integer. Then I'm going to print age. And then I'm going to print age plus 10. So let's see if that works. I'm going to save. And let's run our program. Uh, guy, uh, what is your age? 50. And there I go. I've got 50 plus 60. Um, no, 50. And then I did plus 60. Now the program works because I've simply converted the variable to an integer. And now I can deal with it as a number. Right? <clears throat> so there you go. That's, that's basically uh, playing with variables. Uh, and we've got the semblance of a little bit of a program here. Um, and I'm going to give you an assignment which asks you to embellish on this a little bit. So um, that's it for now. Um, I'll try to dive in more and more to this as we go. Um, and uh, good luck, uh, Cody. Thank you very much. Bye.